Now I, Moroni, after having made an end of abridging the account of the people of Jared, I had supposed not to have written more, but I have not as yet perished, for I make not myself known to the Lamanites, lest they should destroy me. For behold, their wars are exceedingly fierce among themselves, and because of their hatred, they put to death every Nephite who will not deny the Christ. And I, Moroni, will not deny the Christ. Wherefore, I wander whithersoever I can for the safety of mine own life. As I wander day by day, I am left to ponder the last words of my father to which he wrote to me. And all I know is that he is dead now, for so many of my people have been destroyed. And his words weigh heavily upon my mind. My beloved son, I write unto you again, that ye may know that I am yet alive. But I write somewhat of that which is grievous. For behold, I have had a sore battle with the Lamanites, in which we did not conquer. And Archeantus has fallen by the sword, and also Laram and Emron. Yea, and we have lost a great number of our choice men. And now behold, my son, I fear lest the Lamanites shall destroy this people, for they do not repent, and Satan stirreth them up continually to anger one with another. Behold, I am laboring with them continually, and when I speak the word of God with sharpness, they tremble in anger against me. And when I use no sharpness, they harden their heart against it. Wherefore, I fear lest the Spirit of the Lord hath ceased driving with them. For so exceedingly do they anger, that it seemeth me that they have no fear of death, and they have lost their love one towards another, and they thirst after blood and revenge continually. And now, my beloved son, notwithstanding their hardness, let us labor diligently, for if we should cease to labor, we should be brought under condemnation, for we have a labor to perform whilst in this tabernacle of clay, that we may conquer the enemy of all righteousness, and rest our souls in the kingdom of God. Now I write somewhat concerning the sufferings of this people. For according to the knowledge which I have received from Amaron, behold, the Lamanites have many prisoners, which they took from the tower of Shariza. And there were men, women, and children. And the husbands and fathers of those women and children they have slain. And they have feed the women upon the flesh of their husbands and the children upon the flesh of their fathers, and no water save a little do they give unto them. And notwithstanding this great abomination of the Lamanites, it doth not exceed that of our people in Moriantum. For behold, many of the daughters of the Lamanites have they taken prisoners, and after depriving them of that which was most dear and precious above all things, which is chastity and virtue, and after they had done this thing, they did murder them in a most cruel manner, torturing their bodies even unto death. And after they have done this, they devour their flesh like unto wild beasts, because of the hardness of their hearts. And they do it for a token of bravery. O my beloved son, how can a people like this, that are without civilization, and only a few years have passed away, and they were a civil and delightsome people? But O my son, how can a people like this, whose delight is in so much abomination. How can we expect that God will stay his hand in judgment against us? Behold, my heart cries, Woe unto this people! Come out in judgment, O God, and hide their sins and wickedness and abominations from before thy face. And again, my son, there are many widows and their daughters who remain in Shariza. In that part of the provisions, which the Lamanites did not carry away, Behold, the army of Xenophi has carried away, and left them to wander whithersoever they can for food, and many old women do faint by the way and die. And the army which is with me is weak, and the armies of the Lamanites are betwixt Shariza and me. And as many as have fled to the army of Aaron have fallen victims to their awful brutality. Oh, the depravity of my people! They are without order and without mercy. Behold, I am but a man, and I have but the strength of a man, and I cannot any longer enforce my commands, and they have become strong in their perversion, and they are alike, brutal, sparing none, neither old nor young, and they delight in everything save that which is good, and the suffering of our women and our children upon all the face of this land doth exceed everything, yea, tongue cannot tell, neither can it be written. Now, my son, 
I dwell no longer upon this horrible scene. Behold, thou knowest the wickedness of this people. Thou knowest that they are without principle and past feeling, and their wickedness doth exceed that of the Lamanites. Behold, my son, I cannot recommend them unto God, lest he should smite me. But behold, my son, I recommend thee unto God, and I trust in Christ, that thou wilt be saved. And I pray unto God, that he will spare thy life, to witness the return of his people unto him, or their utter destruction. For I know that they must perish, except they repent and return unto him. And if they perish, it will be like unto the Jaredites, because of the wilfulness of their hearts, seeking for blood and revenge. And if it so be that they perish, we know that many of our brethren have deserted over unto the Lamanites, and many more will also desert over unto them. Wherefore, write somewhat a few things, if thou art spared, and I shall perish and not see thee. But I trust that I may see thee soon, for I have sacred records that I will deliver up unto thee. My son, be faithful in Christ, and may not the things which I have written grieve thee to lay thee down unto death. But may Christ lift thee up, and may his sufferings and death, and the showing his body unto our fathers, and his mercy and long suffering, and the hope of his glory and of eternal life, rest in your minds forever. And may the grace of God, the Father, whose throne is high in the heavens, and our Lord Jesus Christ, who sitteth on the right hand of his power, until all things shall become subject unto him, be and abide with you forever. Amen. Now the people of Jared were destroyed, because they formed a secret combination, even as they of old, which combination is most abominable and wicked above all in the sight of God. For the Lord worketh not in secret combinations, neither doth he will that man should shed blood, but in all things hath forbidden it from the beginning of man. And now I, Moroni, do not write the manner of their oaths and combinations, for it hath been made known unto me that they are had among all people, and they are had among the Lamanites, and they have caused the destruction of this people of whom I am now speaking, and also the destruction of the people of Nephi. And whatsoever nation shall uphold such secret combinations to get power and gain, until they shall spread over the nation, behold, they shall be destroyed. For the Lord will not suffer that the blood of his saints, which shall be shed by them, shall always cry unto him from the ground for vengeance upon them, and yet he avenged them not. Wherefore, O ye Gentiles, it is wisdom in God that these things should be shown unto you, that thereby ye may repent of your sins, and suffer not that these murderous combinations shall get above you, which are built up to get power and gain, and the work of yea, even the work of destruction come upon you, yea, even the sword of the justice of the eternal God shall fall upon you to your overthrow and destruction, if ye shall suffer these things to be. Wherefore the Lord commandeth you, when ye shall see these things come among you, that ye shall awake to a sense of your awful situation, because of the secret combination which shall be among you, or woe be unto it, because of the blood of them who have been slain, for they cry from the dust for vengeance upon it, and also upon those who built it up. For it cometh to pass, that whoso buildeth it up seeketh to overthrow the freedom of all lands, nations, and countries, and it bringeth to pass the destruction of all people. For it is built up by the devil, who is the father of all lies, even that same liar who beguiled our first parents, yea, even that same liar who hath caused man to commit murder from the beginning, who hath hardened the hearts of men, that they have murdered the prophets, and stoned them, and cast them out from the beginning. Wherefore I, Moroni, am commanded to write these things, that evil may be done away, and that the time may come that Satan may have no power upon the hearts of the children of men, but that they may be persuaded to do good continually, that they may come unto the fountain of all righteousness and be saved. Now I, Moroni, write somewhat as seemeth me good, and I write unto my brother in the Lamanites, and I would that they should know that more than four hundred and twenty years have passed away since the sign was given of the coming of Christ. And I seal up these records after I have spoken a few words by way of exhortation unto you. Behold, I would exhort you that when ye shall read these things, if it be wisdom in God that ye should read them, that ye would remember how merciful the Lord hath been unto the children of men, 
from the creation of Adam, even down until the time that ye shall receive these things, and ponder it in your hearts. And when ye shall receive these things, I would exhort you that ye ask God, the Eternal Father, in the name of Christ, if these things are true. And if ye shall ask with a sincere heart, with real intent, having faith in Christ, he will manifest the truth of it unto you by the power of the Holy Ghost. And by the power of the Holy Ghost ye may know the truth of all things. And whatsoever thing is good is just and true. Wherefore, nothing that is good denieth the Christ, but acknowledgeth that he is. And ye may know that he is by the power of the Holy Ghost. Wherefore, I would exhort you that ye deny not the power of God, for he worketh by power according to the faith okay. of the children of men, the same today and tomorrow and forever. And again, I exhort you, my brethren, that ye deny not the gifts of God, for they are many, and they come from the same God, and there are different ways that these gifts are administered. But it is the same God who worketh all in all, and they are given by the manifestations of the Spirit of God unto men to profit them. For behold, to one is given by the Spirit of God that he may teach the word of wisdom, and to another that he may teach the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, and to another exceedingly great faith, and to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, and again to another that he may work mighty miracles, and again to another that he may prophesy concerning all things, and again to another the holding of angels and ministering spirits, and again to another all kinds of tongues, and again to another the interpretation of languages and of diverse kinds of tongues. And all these gifts come by the Spirit of Christ, and they come unto every man severely, according as you will. And I would exhort you, my beloved brethren, that you remember that every good gift cometh of Christ. And I would exhort you, my beloved brethren, that you remember that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And that all these gifts of which I have spoken, which are spiritual, never will be done away, even as long as the world shall stand only according to the unbelief of the children of men. Wherefore, there must be faith, and if there must be faith, there must also be hope, and if there must be hope, there must also be charity. And except ye have charity, ye can in no wise be saved in the kingdom of God. Neither can ye be saved in the kingdom of God if ye have not faith, neither can ye if ye have no hope. And if ye have no hope, ye must needs be in despair, and despair cometh because of iniquity. And Christ truly said unto our fathers, If ye have faith, ye can do all things which are expedient unto me. And now I speak unto all the ends of the earth, that if the day cometh, that the power and gifts of God shall be done away among you, it shall be because of unbelief, and woe be unto the children of men, if this be the case. For there shall be none that doeth good among you, no, not one. For if there be one among you that doeth good, he shall work by the power and gifts of God. And woe unto them who shall do these things away and die, for they die in their sins, and they cannot be saved in the kingdom of God. And I speak it according to the words of Christ, and I lie not. And I exhort you to remember these things, for the time speedily cometh, that ye shall know that I lie not, for ye shall see me at the bar of God, and the Lord God will say unto you, did I not declare my words unto you, which were written by this man, like as one crying from the dead, yea, even as one speaking out of the dust? I declare these things unto the fulfilling of the prophecies, and behold, they shall proceed forth out of the mouth of the everlasting God, and his words shall hiss forth from generation to generation. And God shall show unto you that that which I have written is true, and again I would exhort you that you would come unto Christ, and lay hold upon every good gift, and touch not the evil gift, nor the unclean thing. And awake and arise from the dust, O Jerusalem, yea, and put on thy beautiful garments, O daughter of Zion, and strengthen thy stakes, and enlarge thy borders forever, that thou mayest no more be confounded, that the covenants of the Eternal Father, which he hath made unto thee, O house of Israel, may be fulfilled. Yea, come unto Christ, and be perfected in him, and deny yourselves of all ungodliness. And if ye shall deny yourselves of all ungodliness, and love God with all your might, mind, and strength, then is his grace sufficient for you, that by his grace ye may be perfect in Christ, 
And if by the grace of God ye are perfect in Christ, ye can in no wise deny the power of God. And again, if ye by the grace of God are perfect in Christ, and deny not his power, then are ye sanctified in Christ by the grace of God, through the shedding of the blood of Christ, which is in the covenant of the Father under the remission of your sins, that ye become holy without spot. Now I bid unto all farewell. I soon go to rest in the paradise of God, until my spirit and body shall again reunite, and I am brought forth triumphant through the air to meet you before the pleasing bar of the great Jehovah, the eternal judge of both quick and dead. Amen. The account you have just witnessed is true. It is a witness from a people that has long been destroyed, and it contains a warning for us in the future, specifically to America. This ancient record is made from people who are descendants of Jerusalem, so they are Jews, but they also believed in the coming of Christ. This people has been utterly annihilated because they failed to give heed to the warnings. These warnings are being seen in our own nation today. This ancient record translated for us today will help us to understand what is going on in our nation today why things are going wrong, and how we can combat it. This record, which you saw, being carried by the man named Moroni, was made out of golden tablets, and of course this is a replica. But it is translated for our day. Now I would like to read from selections from it. And I will tell you how you can get this record so you can see it for yourself. The first selection, this record has three purposes. One, to teach that Jesus is the Christ. Two, to teach us the right way to follow the Lord. And number three, which is the most neglected out of all of it, is to show us what happens when secret societies take over a nation and how to combat it. Now this ancient people is actually a record of two people. One which has been called the Jaredites, or the people of Jared. Number two, the Nephites, or the people of Nephi. They teach us the proper way to run a government. It says, now, when this people were established, they decided that they wanted to have kings, so they set up kings and lived that way. But then as they got bigger, the threat of a bad king began to be more apparent. And so the last king, whose name was Mosiah, he says to his people, because he was about to die and they were wanted to choose another king. And so this is what Mosiah tells to them. And now let us be wise and look forward to these things and do that which will make for the peace of this people. Therefore I will be your king the remainder of my days. Nevertheless, let us appoint judges to judge this people according to our law. And we will newly arrange the affairs of this people, for we will appoint wise men to be judges that will judge this people according to the commandments of God. Now it is better that a man should be judged of God than of man, for the judgments of God are always just. But the judgments of man are not always just. Therefore, if it were possible that you could have just men to be your kings, who would establish the laws of God and judge this people according to his commandments, yea, if ye could have men for your kings who would do even as my father Benjamin did for this people, 
I say unto you, if this could always be the case, then it would expedient that you should always have kings to rule over you. And even I myself have labored with all the power and faculties which I have possessed to teach you the commandments of God and to establish peace throughout the land, that there should be no wars, nor contentions, nor stealing, nor plundering, nor murdering, nor any manner of iniquity. And whosoever has committed iniquity, him have I punished according to the crime which he has committed, according to the law which has been given to us by our fathers. Now I say unto you that because all men are not just, it is not expedient that ye should have a king or kings to rule over you. For behold, how much iniquity doth one wicked king cause to be committed, yea, and what great destruction. Yea, and remember King Noah, his wickedness and his abominations, and also the wickedness and abominations of his people. Behold, what great destruction did come upon them. And also because of their iniquities, they were brought into bondage. And were it not for the interposition of their all-wise creator, and this because of their sincere repentance, they must unavoidably remain in bondage until now. But behold, he did humble them because they did humble themselves before him, and because they cried mightily unto him, he did deliver them out of bondage. And thus doth the Lord work with his power in all cases among the children of men, extending the arm of mercy towards them that put their trust in him. And behold, now I say unto you, ye cannot dethrone an iniquitous king, save it be through much contention and the shedding of much blood. For behold, he has his friends in iniquity, and he keepeth his guards about him, and he teareth up the laws of those who have reigned in righteousness before him and he trampleth under his feet the commandments of God. And he enacteth laws, and sendeth them forth among his people, yea, laws after the manner of his own wickedness. And whosoever doth not obey his laws, he causes to be destroyed. And whosoever doth rebel against him, he will send his armies against them to war. And if he can, will destroy them. And thus an unrighteous king doth pervert the ways of all righteousness. And now, behold, I say unto you, it is not expedient that such abominations should come upon you. Therefore, choose you by the voice of this people, judges, that ye may be judged, according to the laws which have been given you by our fathers, which are correct, and which were given them by the hand of the Lord. Now, it is not common that the voice of the people desireth anything contrary to that which is right, but it is common for the lesser part of the people to desire that which is not right. Therefore, this shall ye observe, and make it your law, to do your business by the voice of the people. And if the time comes that the voice of the people doth choose iniquity, then it is the time that the judgments of God will come upon you. Yea, then is the time he will visit you with great destruction, even as he has hitherto visited this land. And now, if ye have judges, and they do not judge you according to the law which has been given, ye can cha cause that they may be judged of a higher judge. If your higher judges do not judge righteous judgments, ye shall cause that a small number of your lower judges should be gathered together, and they shall judge your higher judges according to the voice of the people. And I command you to do these things in the fear of the Lord, I command you to do these things, and that ye have no king, that if these people commit sins and iniquities, they shall be answered upon their own heads. For behold, I say unto you, the sins of many people have been caused by the iniquities of their kings, therefore their iniquities are answered upon the heads of their kings. Now I, answer, now I desire that this inequality should be no more in this land, especially among this my people. But I desire that this land be a land of liberty, and every man may enjoy his rights and privileges alike, so long as the Lord sees fit that we may live and inherit the land. Yea, even as long as any of our posterity remain upon the face of the land. And many more things did King Mosiah write unto them, unfolding unto them all the trials and troubles of a righteous king, yea, all the travails of soul for their people, and also all the murmurings of the people to their king. And he explained it unto them, and he told them that these things ought not to be. 
but that the burden should come upon all the people that every man might bear his part. And he also unfolded unto them all the disadvantages they labored under by having an unrighteous king to rule over them. Yea, all his iniquities and abominations and all the wars and contentions and bloodshed and the stealing and the plundering and the committing of whoredoms and all manner of iniquities which cannot be enumerated, telling them that these things ought not to be, that they were expressly repugnant to the commandments of God. Now it came to pass, after King Mosiah had sent these things forth among the people, they were convinced of the truth of his words. Therefore they relinquished their desires for a king and became exceedingly anxious that every man should have an equal chance throughout all the land. Yea, and every man expressed a willingness to answer for his own sins. Therefore it came to pass that they assembled themselves together in bodies throughout the land to cast in their voices concerning who should be their judges, to judge them according to the law, which had been given them. And they were exceedingly rejoiced because of the liberty which had been granted unto them. So now we see that this ancient people, who called the people of Nephi, they established, they, done, they did away with kings and established a land of liberty. Now in the video, you heard a narration of other passages from this ancient record. And in it, it talks about secret combinations. Now, part of this ancient record is to warn us about secret combinations and their effect upon our society. Another section of this record tells us that the Lord will always bring forth works of darkness to light. It says, I will bring forth out of darkness unto light all their secret works and their abominations, and except they repent, I will destroy them from off the face of the earth. And I will bring to light all their secrets and abominations unto every nation that shall hereafter possess the land. So that is a prophecy about us, saying that all the works of darkness that were done among this people would be given to us by the Lord. So that we can understand the own works of darkness that were being brought to light in our own nation today. And the Lord says he has put a curse upon this land. If there are works of darkness. For behold, there is a curse upon all this land. That destruction shall come upon all those workers of darkness according to the power of God. When they are fully ripe. Therefore, I desire that this people might not be destroyed. So, if these works of darkness continue in the land of America, the Lord will put a curse on this land so that this people and the ones who est establish the works of darkness will be destroyed. Now, we are warned in this ancient record that failing to heed religious principles is what brings about the secret combination, and our destruction. Now, it had been many years from the time that the system of judges was established, and the people had lots of peace and prosperity. But wickedness began to overtake the people. For it says, Now it came to pass that after Helaman and his brethren had appointed priests and teachers over the churches, that there arose a dissension among them, and they would not give heed to the words of Helaman and his brethren. But they grew proud, being lifted up in their hearts, because of their exceedingly great riches. Therefore they grew rich in their own eyes, and would not give heed to their words, to walk uprightly before God. And it came to pass that as many as would not hearken to the words of Helaman and his brethren were gathered together against their brethren. And now behold, they were exceedingly wroth, insomuch that they were determined to slay them. Now the leader of those who were wroth against their brethren was a large and a strong man, and his name was Amalekiah. And Amalekiah was desirous to be a king, 
and those people who were wroth were also desirous that he should be their king. And they were the greater part of them, the lower judges of the land, and they were seeking for power. And they had been led by the flatteries of Malachiah, that if they would support him and establish him to be their king, that he would make them rulers over the people. Thus they were led away by Amalekiah to dissensions, notwithstanding the preaching of Helaman and his brethren, yea, notwithstanding their exceedingly great care over the church, for they were high priests over the church. And there were many in the church who believed in the flattering words of Amalekiah. Therefore they dissented even from the church, and thus were the affairs of the people of Nephi exceedingly precarious and dangerous, notwithstanding their great victory which they had had over the Lamanites and their great rejoicing which they had had because of the deliverance by the hand of the Lord. Thus we see how quick the children of men do forget the Lord their God, yea, how quick to do iniquity and to be led away by the evil one. Yea, and we see the great wickedness one very wicked man can cause to take place among the children of men. Be we see that Malachiah, because he was a man of cunning device and a man of many flattering words, that he led away the hearts of many people to do wickedly, yea, to seek to destroy the church of God and to destroy the foundation of liberty which God had granted unto them, or which blessing God had sent upon the face of the land for the righteous sake. So, here we have the first cause of, of the destruction of their law. Now, they had a system of judges which was inspired by God. Now, some of these judges became corrupt, and one man sought power over all the people to rule over them. And he led away the people to, by flattery and got them to rebel against the true law of the land and the system of judges and to try to establish a king. Now, here is the response of another man named Moroni. In fact, the man you saw in the video, whose name was Moroni, was named after this man. And this is how all of us need to be if we are to overthrow the the secret combinations that are at work in our own nation today. And in fact, this is the proper response of our own military against a government takeover. Now it came to pass that when Moroni, who was the chief commander of the armies of the Nephites, had heard of these dissensions, he was angry with Malachiah. And it came to pass that he rent his coat, and he took a piece thereof, and wrote upon it, In memory of our God, our religion, and freedom, and our peace, our wives, and our children. And he fastened it upon the end of a pole. And he fastened on his headplate, and his breastplate, and his shields, and girded on his armor about his loins. And he took the pole which had on the end thereof his rent coat, and he called it the title of liberty. And he bowed himself to the earth and he prayed mightily unto his God for the blessing of liberty to rest upon his brethren so long as there should a band of Christians remain to possess the land. For thus were all the true believers of Christ who belonged to the church of God, called by those who did not belong to the church, and those who did belong to the church were faithful. Yea, all those who were true believers in Christ took upon them gladly the name of Christ, or Christians, as they were called, because of their belief in Christ who should come. And therefore, at this time, Moroni prayed that the cause of the Christians and the freedom of the land might be favored. And it came to pass that when he had poured out his soul to God, he named all the land which was south of the land desolation. Yea, and then find all the land, both on the north and the south, a chosen land and a land of liberty. And he said, Surely God shall not suffer that we who are despised because we take upon us the name of Christ shall be trodden down and destroyed until we bring it upon us by our own transgressions. And when Moroni had said these words, he went forth among the people, waving the rent part of his garment in the air, that all might see the writing which he had written upon the rent part, and crying with a loud voice, saying, 
Behold, whosoever will manifest this title upon the land, let them come forth in the strength of the Lord, and enter into a covenant that they will maintain their rights and their religion, that the Lord God may bless them. It came to pass that when Moroni had claimed these words, behold, the people came running together with their armor girded about the loins, rending their garments in token, or as a covenant that they would not forsake the Lord their God, or in other words, that they should transgress the commandments of God, or fall into transgression, and be ashamed to take upon them the name of Christ, the Lord should rend them even as they had rent their garments. Now this was the covenant which they made, and they cast their garments at the feet of Moroni, saying, We covenant with our God that we shall be destroyed, even as our brethren in the land northward, if we shall fall into transgression. Yea, he may cast us at the feet of our enemies, even as we have cast our garments at thy feet to be trodden underfoot, if we shall fall into transgression. Moroni said unto them, Behold, we are a remnant of the seed of Jacob, yea, we are a remnant of the seed of Joseph, whose coat was rent by his brethren into many pieces. Yea, and now behold, let us remember to keep the commandments of God of our garments, or our garments shall be rent by our brethren, and we be cast into prison, and be sold, or be slain. Yea, let us preserve our liberty as a remnant of Joseph. Yea, let us remember the words of Jacob before his death. For behold, he saw that a part of the remnant of the coat of Joseph was preserved, and had not decayed. And he said, Even as this garment, remnant of garment of my son hath been preserved, so shall a remnant of the seed of my son be preserved by the hand of God, and be taken unto himself, while the remainder of the seed of Joseph shall perish, even as the remnant of his garment. Now behold, this giveth my soul sorrow, nevertheless my joy hath my soul hath joy in my son, because of that part of his seed which shall be taken unto God. Now behold, this was the language of Jacob. And now who knoweth but what the remnant of the seed of Joseph which shall perish as his garment as those who have descended from us? Yea, and even if it shall be ourselves, if we do not stand fast in the face of Christ. Now it came to pass that when Moroni had said these words, he went forth, and also sent forth in all parts of the land where there were dissensions, and gathered together all the people who were desirous to maintain their liberty to stand against the Malachiah, and those who had dissented who were called Malachiahites. And it came to pass that when the Malachiah saw that the people of Moroni were more numerous than the Malachiahites, and he also saw that his people were doubtful concerning the justice of the cause in which they had undertaken. Therefore, fearing that he should not gain the point, he took those of his people who would and departed into the land of Nephi. Now Moroni thought it was not expedient that the Lamanites should have any more strength. Therefore, he thought to cut off the people of Malachiah, or to take them and bring them back and put Malachiah to death. Yea, for he knew that he would stir up the Lamanites to anger against them and cause them to come to battle against them. And thus he knew that Malachiah would do that he might obtain his purposes. Therefore Moroni thought it was expedient that he should take his army who had gathered themselves together and armed themselves and entered into a covenant to keep the peace. And it came to pass that he took his army and marched out with his tents into the wilderness to cut off the course of Amalekiah in the wilderness. And it came to pass that he did, according to his desires, and marched forth into the wilderness and headed the armies of Amalekiah. It came to pass that Amalekiah fled with a small number of his men, and the remainder were delivered up into the hands of Moroni and were taken back into the land of Zarahemla. Now Moroni, being a man who was appointed by the chief judges and the voice of the people, therefore he had power according to his will with the armies of the Nephites to establish and exercise authority over them. And it came to pass that whosoever of the Malachiahites that would not enter into a covenant to support the cause of freedom, that they might maintain a free government, he caused to be put to death. And there were but few who denied the covenant of freedom. 
And it came to pass that he caused the title of liberty to be hoisted upon every tower which was in all the land, which was possessed by the Nephites. And thus Moroni planted the standard of liberty among the Nephites. And they began to have peace again in the land. And thus they did maintain peace in the land until nearly the end of the nineteenth year of the reign of the judges. So Moroni, being the leader of the armies of the Nephites, used his power and authority to preserve the free government of the land and to fight against all those who would seek to establish a king and to take away the liberty and rights of the people. Now in Malachiah, he did flee away from the armies of Moroni and went to the Lamanites, another group of people. And he used a secret combination to gain control of the armies of the Lamanites, he murdered the king and united the people. And then after that, he began issuing forth propaganda among the Lamanites to stir up hatred. For it is written here in this ancient record, it says, Yea, he did appoint men to speak unto the Lamanites from their towers against the Nephites. So here we see that when a secret combination comes into power, they use propaganda to speak hatred against their enemies that they want us to destroy for them. Now, if someone is truly an enemy, we do not need propaganda for they will be at our door destroying us. Propaganda is used to try to get us to fight people who are not really our enemies but are the enemies of the secret combination that seeks power over all lands and nations. Now, Malachi succeeded in his design. He got the people of, of the Lamanites to fight against the people of the Nephites. And so the Nephites became bogged down in a terrible war. And it was a war of annihilation. For the Lamanites had such great hatred for the people of, of the Nephites, especially since the propaganda of, of Malachi. But while the Nephites were fighting to preserve their liberty, another group of people seeking king became established in among the Nephites. And they had a desire to overthrow a man named Paharan, who was the, 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 the chief judge among the people of the Nephites. And it is written, And it came to pass that those who were desirous that Pahoran should be dethroned from the judgment seat were called king men, for they were desirous that the law should be altered in a manner to overthrow the free government and to establish a king over the land. And those who were desirous that Pahoran should remain chief judge over the land took upon them the name of freemen. And thus was the division among them, for the freemen had sworn or covenanted to maintain their rights and the privileges of their religion by a free government. And so <clears throat> the there became there was this dissension among the people and you, and you had two groups of people basically you had people who believed in tyranny and people who believe in liberty and respectively they called king men and free men and we see the same argument in our land today you have people who believe that yeah the government should have more power should um have, which makes it a tyranny, whether they call it that or not, some do, some don't. But they believe that the government should be all-powerful and should take more control over our lives. And we have true patriots in America, which are the same as the free men in this ancient record. And the, the king men, or the people who want tyranny, alter the law of the land so that they could establish themselves kings or dictators or tyrants or whatever you want to call it. It's all the same language, just different names. Now, Captain Moroni became very angry at the government of the Nephites because he felt that they were not doing their job. And it is written in the ancient record, it says, And it came to pass that Moroni was angry with the government because of their indifference concerning the freedom of their country. And so Moroni, being the chief captain over the, all the armies of the Nephites, 
he was angry and because they had lost a battle and it was because that the government was not sending enough support to them. Now, Moroni, in response to this, he writes a long letter to the, to the leader of the government in the capital city. And he tries to stir them up into remembrance of, of their liberty, but there's two, two passages in his letter that is recorded in this ancient record that is very important for us in our day to know, especially our, the leaders of our own military. Moroni writes to the government, he says, Ye know that ye do transgress the laws of God, and ye do know that ye do trample them under your feet. Behold, the Lord saith unto me, If those whom ye have appointed your governors do not repent of their sins and iniquities, ye shall go up to battle against them. Now, the difference between Moroni and these other people who fight it, want to fight against the government that Moroni did not do it for power. He was just doing it to try to restore liberty in the land. He also writes at the very end of his letter, he says, Behold, I am Moroni, your chief captain. I seek not for power, but to pull it down. I seek not for honor of the world, but for the glory of my God and the freedom and welfare of my country. And thus I close my epistle. Now, Moroni said this letter to the chief government, to the chief judge of the land who was elected, whose name was Pahoran. Now, Pahoran wrote a letter in response, and he sa and uh, he says, "I, Pahoran, who am the chief governor of this land, do send these words unto Moroni, the chief captain over the army." Behold, I say unto you, Moroni, that I do not joy in your great afflictions, yea, it grieves my soul. But behold, there are those who do joy in your afflictions, yea, insomuch that they have risen up in rebellion against me, and also those of my people who are free men. Yea, and those who have risen up are exceedingly numerous, and it is those who have sought to take away the judgment seat from me that have been the cause of this great iniquity, for they have used great flattery and have led away the hearts of many people, which will be the cause of sore affliction among us. They have withheld our provisions, and have daunted our freemen, that they have not come unto you. And behold, they have driven me out before them, and I have fled to the land of Gideon, with as many men as it were possible that I could get. And behold, I have sent a proclamation throughout this part of the land, and behold, they are flocking to us daily, to their arms, in the defense of their country, and their freedoms, and they have come unto us insomuch that those who have risen up in rebellion against us are set at defiance, insomuch that they do fear us and durst not come out against us to battle. Now when Moroni heard this, he rejoiced that it was not because the government was trying to overthrow the liberty of the people, it was rebels who have prevented um, the people from achieving victory over their enemies and he became angry at the people who were led by a man named Pachas and he, he took with whatever armies he could spare and he marched directly to the capital city and he waged war against Pachas and the kingmen who sought to overthrow the freedom and liberty of the people and this is what Moroni did. He says, And behold, Pachas was slain, and his men were taken prisoners, and Pahoran was restored to his judgment seat. And the men of Pachas received their trial according to the law, and also those king men who had been taken and cast into prison, and they were executed according to the law. Yea, those men of Pachas and those king men, whosoever would not take up arms in the defense of their country, but would fight against it, were put to death. And thus it became expedient that the law should be strictly observed for the safety of their country. Yea, and whosoever was found denying their freedom was speedily executed according to the law. 
So it says here that it was part of the law that God has given these people that whosoever would not protect liberty and in fact seek to oppose liberty and establish kingdoms to establish tyranny and whoever supported that cause was put to death by the law of God. Now according to this ancient record, Moroni, who was the chief captain of their armies, gained the victory. They pushed out the Lamanites, they defeated Amalekiah, and they restored peace again in the land. But of course, after many years, another secret combination sprung up in the land. And it is written here, it says, For behold, the Lord had blessed them so long with the riches of the world that they had not been stirred up to anger, to wars, nor to bloodshed. Therefore they began to set their hearts upon the riches. Yea, they began to seek to get gain, that they might be lifted up one above another. Therefore they began to commit secret murders, and to rob and to plunder, that they might get gain. So, because they were no longer having wars, they began to prosper again. They started loving their wealth and became hard in their hearts. And a secret combination formed by two people named Kishkumen and Gadianton, they established a secret combination to murder the judge, the chief judge of the land, so that they could gain the judgment seat. And it is written here, it says, Now it came to pass that when the Lamanites found that there were robbers among them, they were exceedingly sorrowful, and they did use every means in their power to destroy them off the face of the earth. But behold, Satan did stir up the hearts of the more part of the Nephites, insomuch that they did unite with those bands of robbers, and did enter into their covenants and their oaths, that they would protect and preserve one another in whatsoever difficult circumstances they should be placed, that they should not suffer for their murders and their plunderings and their stealings. And it came to pass that they did have their signs, yea, their secret signs and their secret words, and thus, and this that they might distinguish a brother who had entered into the covenant, that whatsoever wickedness his brother should do, he should not be injured by his brother, nor by those who did belong to this band, his band, who had taken this covenant. And this, thus they might murder and plunder and steal and commit whoredoms and all manner of wickedness contrary to the laws of their country and also the laws of their God. And whosoever of those who belonged to their band should reveal unto the world of their wickedness and their abominations should be tried, not according to the laws of their country, but according to the laws of their wickedness, which had been given by Ganianton and Kishkumen. So what we see here is that these secret combinations were built up so that people could gain wealth and power and to do wickedness and not be tried according to the laws of the land. Now, are we seeing this in our day? Are people who commit crimes who are so high in power that nothing happens to them, or they're punished so little that it doesn't really mean anything. I believe so. We see within our banking institutions people who should rightly go to jail, but they don't because they are part of a secret combination to overthrow the freedom of this land. And they are, and if they're caught in the open, they are just merely chastened and nothing happens to them or they just have to pay a small fine which means nothing to them. So we see that there is a secret combination in our land and we were warned about it by these ancient people who were destroyed. Now this secret combination is authored by the devil. It is written here that it doesn't matter whether you hide the way they did things Satan himself teaches the people. And another way we are warned about is when our government has been taken over by these secret combinations. It says here, it says, And seeing the people in a state of such awful wickedness, and those Gadiant and robbers filling the judgment seats, having usurped the power and authority of the land, laying aside the commandments of God, and not in the least a right before him, doing no justice unto the children of men. 
condemning the righteous because of their righteousness, letting the guilty and the wicked go unpunished because of their money, and moreover to be held in office at the head of government, to rule and do according to their wills, that they might get gain and glory of the world, and moreover that they might the more easily commit adultery and steal and kill and do according to their own wills. So we see that their government was taken over by the secret combination which was founded by the devil and it sought to do all those horrible things. <coughs> now, since we are seeing those signs in our own government, whether we know it or not, we must understand that we have been warned by God through the records of this ancient people that if we allow them to, they will take over our government, they will set aside our laws, they will destroy Christianity out of our land, and they will seek to destroy anybody who opposes them. I tell you that I know that this is happening in our land today. If you do not see it, you are not paying attention to reality around you, and that this secret combination has taken over our government, and it is seeking to enforce its will upon us. Now, this ancient record is available for all people to read. It contains this account. A th an entire third of this record is devoted solely to the effects of secret combinations of people trying to overthrow the liberty of people and the result of what happens if we fail to fight against it. It will be destruction. The Moroni who hit up this record in the ground was the last of his people. Everyone else either deserted or was destroyed by war and murdered because they would not deny that Jesus was the Christ. This became, came because they allowed secret combinations to get above them, to own their government, to control them. Now, if you don't already know the name of this book, which is available free to everybody, it is the Book of Mormon. It is a testimony of Jesus Christ. It is written by descendants of Jerusalem who fled before the Babylonian destruction. They were led by God through the wilderness, through the desert, until they came to an ocean to which they were then instructed to build a ship. And they were guided by God over the waters to this land, which is now called America, and they established a great nation based on freedom and liberty, but that nation got overthrown by secret combinations, by people lusting for power and gain, and they got the people to turn to wickedness, and they rejected Christ, killed the Christians, who believed in Christ and their record is all the left that we have of that people and it was given to us by God so that we can know how to stop the secret combination that would come about in our own land for as Moroni wrote by his own hand he wrote that says to us, it says, Wherefore the Lord commandeth you, speaking to us, the Lord, Wherefore the Lord commandeth you, when ye shall see these things come among you, that ye shall awake to a sense of your awful situation because of the secret combination which shall be among you, or woe be unto it because of the blood of them who have been slain. For they cry from the dust for vengeance upon it, and also upon those who built it up. For it cometh to pass that whoso buildeth it up seeketh to overthrow the freedoms of all lands, nations, and countries, and it bringeth to pass the destruction of all people. For it is built up by the devil who is the father of all lies. So the Book of Mormon is for us in our day to help us to recognize the secret combination. 
that has taken over our government. By rejecting this work, you are uh, throwing away the ability to know how to fight against the secret combination. I tell you that this work is true, and you can get it for free. Just follow the links below. And I know this work is true, and will help us to reclaim freedom in our land. I leave this with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.